We're going to start with uh, Thierry from uh, the Addresses for Hall Institute, which is going to talk about uh, open database for of addresses. My name is Thierry Jean. I'm French, but I've been living in Brazil for more than 30 years now. So I'm very glad to be here with you. Um, I was the country manager for, for Telenav in Brazil, and they, uh, they asked me to help OpenStreetMap at the time. And since then, I've been very much involved in helping the community, and I've done a work which is not very common, which is really doing public relations for OpenStreetMap, uh, particularly in, in Brazil, having organized the state of the map 2016 with Victor George, uh, with the community, etc. But something that I've noticed is that what was most missing in, the, in, 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 in OpenStreetMap were addresses. So I was very much impressed by a presentation by Christian Quest, who was the president of OpenStreetMap in France, and he did a presentation at the state of the map 2014 in Buenos Aires. He had explained to us that he went and met the, government, the French government, and he explained to them, hey, you've got good data here in many different uh, entities and companies and state companies. Why don't we create one database of addresses which would be open to all? And he was recruited by the French government for doing it. So I tried to do that, to do the same thing uh, in Brazil. And this is the presentation I normally do to the people now um, uh, in, in municipalities. So uh, when, what happened is that I tried to set up the same project as in France, in Brazil. Everyone found the idea very interesting, but it, as, as no one would do it, we decided to do it uh, as part of an NGO, right? And this is the presentation that normally I show to the people when I try to get data from them. So we are, we've got a team and we are entering in contact with the municipalities, with the water companies, the, the electricity companies, and we try to get data from them, okay? So I explained that it all starts with OpenStreetMap. I speak about OpenStreetMap. Uh, I explain to them how it's easy to, to edit OpenStreetMap, et cetera. And at one point I arrive, it's not as fast as I would like. <laughs> I arrive at the slide that shows, in fact, the work that uh, Christian Quest has done um, in France. And I explain, so I, that's a, a presentation about OpenStreetMap. And uh, I explain to them uh, what had been, has been done in France. And now there is, there is microphone. In. Yeah, and, 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 and now, we have started doing that in Brazil as part of an NGO because we didn't manage to do it with the French, with the Brazilian government. This gives you an idea of the type of, of, of explanation that I do about OpenStreetMap, right? Uh, so that's the presentation I saw Christian Quest in Buenos Aires in 2014. So we decided, yet we didn't manage to, to do it with the Brazilian government. We set up an NGO because we thought it was very, very likely that we would find sponsors for this ID. So we now have uh, a concrete, so I, met, I visited the, the project also in France. We set up the older structure. Here are the three founders at the beginning of the ID, right? Myself, Peter Christ, and Philippe Rocha. We've got a team of people who are initially volunteers, and then they started working with us as freelancers. It's not a lot of money, but we are really having to pay the people to have something, something, some, something very concrete happening, right? And we've got a very good uh, board of, uh, of uh, advisory board, in particular with uh, Roberto Olinto, who is the former president of the National Institute of Statistics in Brazil, the IBGE, right? And now, after we work in 2020, uh, calling the municipality, so we one person calling the municipality, one person uh, sending the email automatically, then having the, I, uh, having the call with all the people and having gathered around 20, 10 or to 11 million address points in Brazil. Then we spoke with different sponsors. I was trying to find different sponsors for, for this ID. And Microsoft told us, hey, but we, we, what you are doing in Brazil is fantastic. We would love you to, to, to do that in other places in Latin America. So I said, yes, but uh, we, 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 it's not a work that you can do just uh, calling, for, calling for the help of the of the, of the community, it's important to have people that at one point or another we pay for, ma for making sure that we manage to, have, to get results. So we could set up a budget and uh, we are now working in, in all South America, okay? 
So the project is going well. My objective is that we should be able to work in Africa uh, quite soon because uh, uh, I speak the languages of Africa except Arabic. Uh, but uh, we still need support for that. But I think that many connections can be done in this event. Uh, partners, um, friends, the people we know in the different in the different countries. Okay. So thank you very much, and uh, please feel free to to contact me on that number. Okay. Thank you very much. Next, we're going to have uh, Beata, which uh, are going to talk about. Improve OSM, new data dumps. So, hi everyone, my name is Beata, and today I will talk about the new Impro OSM data dumps. What is Impro OSM? Impro OSM is a suite of tools that we launched back in 2015 with the purpose to enhance OSM with probably missing one ways, roads, and turn restrictions. This data came from massive uh, data analysis comparing huge amount of GPS data with OSM data. And it's available in ID, JOSM, and also in the format of the data dumps. Data dumps offer uh, more flexibility to the users, both, in, uh, both using the data as mapping in uh, JOSM or other tools, but also encourages uh, integration into other systems. Uh, the ImproSM data dumps are available at dumps.improsm.org and are updated nightly. The data previously available here was uh, reorganized at the beginning of August and we published new additional data sources. At this address, you can find existing dumps folder. In this folder are the existing missing roads, one-way and turn restriction data in CSV format. Uh, here you can find overall and country-based data dumps. In the additional new dumps folder, we have one-way speed limit, two-wheel, four-wheel, and also turn restriction data in CSV and GeoJSON format. We added the new GeoJSON format in order to facilitate a better mapping workflow. Here you can see overall and country-based data dumps for the Southeast Asia region that contains only the potential missing map attributes from OSM. In the existing data dumps folder, you can see all our data that has also already solved by the community. How does this improvised CSV dumps look like? Well, first we add to these uh, CSV files the necessary data to represent uh, the, the map features on the map and also to map it. Each of these files contains a unique identifier of the element, the ID of the OSM way, the geometry in VKT format, and also the type of the attribute or the value of the attribute. For one-way and speed limit files, we also added a flag that indicates to which direction the attribute should be applied. And for turn restriction, uh, also the turning point geometry in VKT format is uh, present. Uh, here you can see the format of the GeoJSON files. For GeoJSON, we add the same information, but in other format. Uh, here you can see one-way speed limit, two-wheel, four-wheel accessibility, and also turn restriction format. And now I will uh, present shortly two use case demos, one for the GeoJSON file and the other uh, for the CSV file. Uh, for the GeoJSON, you can easily download uh, and use the files by uh, mapping in JOSM. I recommend to additionally use the Carta view and also the Mapillary plugins to double check the attribute in the real world. And in order to organize better your task, I recommend to use the to-do plugin. After you download the desired uh, GeoJSON file, in this example, I downloaded the speed limit GeoJSON file, you open in uh, JOSM and you will see on the new layer represented with red uh, segments, the OSM width that we have an associated speed limit attribute. Um, I also recommend to add these attributes to the to-do list uh, plugin and afterwards select an element from the uh, list. Uh, for this example, I found carta view images available and you can see there that we have also a traffic light, a traffic sign representing the speed limit value. Afterwards, uh, you can add the max speed uh, tag with the specified uh, uh, value and mark the element as uh, done in the to-do list. 
export the CSV file. First, we need to convert to JoJSON. This can be done by using the QGIS tool uh, and uh, exporting the data into our JoJSON format. The mapping uh, workflow is similar for the generated two-wheel, four-wheel attribute files as the previously presented mapping workflow. Also here, it is recommended to double check with imagery. Here you can see that uh, the street is too narrow to, can, uh, to be passed by a car. And for this use case, you can add the motor car no attribute. So I think I am out of time. This is from my side. If you have any questions, please contact me. Uh, next, we're going to have uh, Nicoletta, which is going to talk about the GeoHash plugin. Hello, everyone. I'm Nicoletta. The aim of this talk is to familiarize you with the GeoHash plugin and to show you the advantages of using this. These are the main topics contained in the today's agenda, so let's make a start. Some of you may wonder what is a GeoHash plugin, but before answering this question, I want to make clear what is a GeoHash. The GeoHash is an encoding system which gives to each location on the array a unique identifier. Knowing this, each array, is rep array or unit is represented by um, a set of um, characters, which are digits and letters. Using this definition, a GeoHash plugin is um, a plugin which is uh, contained in the JOTSOM tool, which can be really useful for the ones which, uh, which work on uh, precise arrays. Computing the geohashes is um, a key part of this plugin, and uh, the implementation used in this uh, tool bases on um, a geohash function, which reduces the longitude and logi log longitude and latitude of um, uh, the coordinates into a single value. The geohashes are then calculated based on this encoded value, and the precision. Uh, of this um, unit is um, increases alongside with the zoom used in the map. To be more exact, as you can see in this example, the precision increases alongside with the zoom. In the first picture, we have a geohash with a, a one character code, which is, has a way lower precision than um, the one in the fourth picture, which has uh, of seven digits uh, unique identifier code. In the remaining time, I would like to um, present some of the main tool features. And uh, first, I will start with the search bar. Imagine that you are working on mapping a specific area. You will do your first mapping session, and on your second one, you will want to come back to the um, improved area in some well-known ways, such as jumping to the stepping uh, from one zoom level to one to another, or uh, using the prefix of the geohashes, which are the um, unit. More time my more time saving. Um, telling you this, you can uh, jump in the search bar located in the panel and enter there your um, code. Uh, and as you wish, you can add a code with more digits or less digits, depending on the zoom you want to continue your work. This GeoHash plugin has different use cases. So um, according to this, the map on the underlying layer may vary depending on your purpose. The underlying map won't influence the, the grids and the geohashes, but it will have um, some impact on the colors used in the border. This means that they will change from bright to bl uh, dark blue according to the color palette used in the underground layer. This will um, have uh, some impact, some benefit on uh, the, the visibility of the unique code identifiers, which you can see in the upper left corner in each cell. And uh, in order to better see the, the limited array of, in the map. 
The tool has also um, sizing options. What does it mean? Well, you can navigate. Well, you can navigate in um, uh, on the left side of the layer, as you can see in the animation, and uh, move your uh, unit one level uh, downsize or upsize in order to see um, a bigger or smaller area. I particularly find this um, functionality really useful when you want to see the changes in adjacent units. This Geohash plugin is an open source project, so you are welcome to contribute to the code or leave suggestions or improvements. Thank you very much for your attention. And thank you, uh, and all speakers, for those uh, lovely talks. Uh, I think we're out of time, uh, and we should be getting ready for the next talk. So uh, thank you for attending.